guys welcome back to another video we are here a special video we're basically doing a drive and talking let me put my seatbelt on real quick <laughs> we are here with uh one of my good friends one of my best friends norn say what's up norn what's going on? we are here in his uh, lexus ls 430. norn i'll let you introduce yourself i don't know i guess import fan you know mm -hmm. the, in high school with the big car show and stuff like that and yeah been hooked since it kind of surprised me that you got this car what's your history of cars like what have you owned from like you know like day one so i had an rx7 yeah 80, so that, i think 86 87 it was it was a good car but that was my first car uh what what'd you get next so after that i ended up getting a 93 miata i bought one which okay. was a 93 okay i ended up finding a 95 M edition. Okay, and, and that has the, the more powerful motor, right? Yeah, so the 93 had the 1.6 and then the 95 had a 1.8. It doesn't sound like much, but in a small body like that, it is. Mm -hmm. Like you can break the tires easier on a 1.8 than you could on a 1.6, but but um, I enjoyed the Miata a lot more than I enjoyed the RX-7. It was just easier to work on. And I believe parts that, were more <laughs> available, so I was like, yeah. yeah. That ended up getting totaled, and then in 2014, I bought this car. Yeah. Yeah, surprisingly, I actually haven't noticed, like, this car, like, to me, it seems kind of rare, at least in my area. Uh, we live in different cities, but have you noticed any of these cars around? You don't see them that often. I'm not sure if it's a sleeper or it just blends in. I would say it would be both. It's not a car that you see younger kids driving, so I definitely think it's more of like an old folks car. I mean, you'll, you'll have like your tight-knit group of people that have these cars, but Hardcore just driving around, exactly, like just driving yeah. around, you won't really see it that often. This is definitely a different switch uh, going from a small-ass small Miata rear-wheel drive into a bigger, more big luxury car. What made you switch? I've always like, loved the LS 430. Oh, okay. I've so it's always not, when it's I, not coming out of nowhere. No, no. When I seen the the LS 400s come out, yeah, and I knew they were rear wheel drive. That's what really caught me. Like all my cars have been rear wheel drive. I just like rear wheel drive. Honestly, cars. didn't know this car was rear wheel drive. I like the idea of just the rear wheel drive. Like, I don't know, just just something about it. Yeah, I don't think I. Yeah, I would get an LS 460, mm -hmm. but the only thing that down like saddens me is the fact that it's an all-wheel drive car i think so what i did for maintenance is just your run of the mill time and bell and stuff like that brakes and stuff like that but i changed out just the suspension yeah. i have vc coilovers the ability to adjust it but just have it just be maintenance almost maintenance free yeah it's cool man i, I like the look I, of the bag I, yeah <laughs> I, was, I, I remember us talking about it uh we, we're both contemplating it we, we need our cars to be A to B, you know, yeah. at the end of the day. And we don't want to take that risk or add add extra points of failure. Yeah. Especially if it's your main car. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I had another car, I would bag this in a heartbeat. The spring rate, I have 10Ks up front, eight in the back. Mm -hmm. I think it's too stiff. Like, I definitely enjoyed the ride quality when I had stock shocks. It was beautiful. Like, the thing... Yes, it's a boat, but yeah. it's a smooth ass boat, and I enjoyed that. And then when I swapped over to coilovers, that was kind of—I knew I expected that it was gonna be rougher, mm -hmm. but I really didn't miss the ride quality. It is so nice driving in a car that just glides down the road. Yeah, <laughs> especially when uh, this car is—this uh, is definitely a hefty boy. It's a—it's yeah, a it's big a, boy. Lord used to work at a shop, and I saw him stop by one day. Uh, what wheels did you actually ever get to run those wheels? They were works. They're, they're a welded two-piece. The wheels that you want, there's a good story behind that or trying to get right now. Well, the wheels that I want, they're used wheels. So obviously there's bound to be some issues with it. Yeah. So the um, the Leon Harderitz, the Freden, Fridens, I got them. One of the barrels had like four or five cracks. So I ordered these wheels back in the beginning of May of 2021, so this year and i am still waiting for a barrel people were telling me bro just send it back to them get your money back i was like i do want to send them the money back i want a full refund but i cannot find another set of these wheels i like the way they look because it, it works well for this car it's not too much but then it's just enough and then the new lips it just looks 
minty. If I had known there was a bad barrel, then I would be like, yeah. yo, just, all right, cool. Let me buy, essentially, rebuild the whole entire shit. Let me get yeah. lips. Let me get a new barrel for that one barrel that's pissing. And then yeah. send it to me, and I'm good. And they did give me the runaround yeah. for a while. And looking at the reviews from that company, I don't think I'd buy anything else from them. If it wasn't for those wheels being available only at this place, at, at their place, yeah. I would never bought it. As long as I get that barrel, I'm just, I'm just going to be putting it together and I just want to slap it on honestly it's like I've been waiting for so long like I want these wheels on like I want you to haven't had tires yet right yeah I already bought tires oh, I got shit. everything oh, ready oh, how is it for power because um it's getting pretty close up to it's like almost 300 horsepower right I think it's like 280 something 280? like that yeah yeah then that, and that's from factory obviously mm -hmm. you know it kind of the horsepower deteriorates uh considering how many miles this has which is uh, over 200,000. I got 240,000 yeah. miles on it. It's Toyota reliability, baby. So you lacking power at all? Oh, it gets. If, okay. you, if you get on it. Stop on it. It's, it's it it'll go, absolutely. Okay. I mean, that's yeah. how well these motors did. Like, yeah. they transferred it into other cars. I mean, I got the car in 2014 with 95,000 miles, and now it's 20, about to be 2022. Yeah. So, I mean, I've never had a real crazy issue with it yeah. because if I did, my pockets would be dry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's just a testament to Toyota, honestly. I mean, like, I haven't had anything, but I mean, you're talking about an 87 RX-7. <laughs> um, a beat up Miata. Yeah. Going to this, it's like night and day. Yeah, night and day, yeah. How, how's the infotainment actually? I'm just comparing it to mine, it's like the button, like this, I think there's a Toyota thing where the buttons are nice and big, but I actually prefer it that way where I don't have to hesitate to press a certain button. It's simple, it's not, yeah. it's not tough to find buttons, and, and everything is just made to be in a spot where it's it feel it comfortable and makes sense. Yeah. Even something like this. This little mini space. Oh, yeah. That's to block out the sunlight when yeah. it comes down. It's like, I what see. the hell? Like, it's those little things that you like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. you don't. That's actually pretty dope. Like, I didn't realize that. There were so many little things that I didn't notice that I yeah. ended up finding out just by luck. I never really had a use for this, this bottom tray. Like, you have one under your seat, too. It's a bottom tray. Yeah, it's a tray on the bottom. <laughs> and I think this is dope right here, where the passenger temperature, mm -hmm. I'm like, you don't have to, like, fiddle around, look over here. It's literally right here. You cannot miss it. The materials seem a little bit higher quality in, in, uh, than mine's. Even though yours is, like, what, almost triple the miles, it doesn't look like it from the interior. Like, everything seems, like, nice and clean, no crazy rips, really high-quality stuff. When I was looking at the reviews before I bought the car, I heard nothing but good things about it, so I was like, yeah. it's, it's not, you can't really go bad. I mean, yeah, it's it's going to have more miles, but mm -hmm. these cars are meant to have miles and they're meant yeah. to last. Like, nope. Yeah, I, it's lasting, definitely. I love everything about this car. If I could, I would buy another one. How is it on gas? Oh, you, it's terrible. You drive kind of 50-50 for uh, I drive on the highway? I drive a lot. I, I do a lot of driving. The gas prices are crazy. How much gas it eats is crazy. I mean, it's a V8. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It just hurts you know, to go to the gas station all the time. You, know, you got to pump gas. Like, yeah. what the fuck you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you do have the stock wheels on this car. These are the 18s. Oh, okay. Yeah. 18s from factory. These are the factory nice. ones. That's sick. Quick yeah. question: How is the braking on this? I remember checking out the calipers. They're freaking like the size of my head. They're like, they're, ginormous. they're they're four piston calipers. They're big. This car does brake. After realizing like the way this car really has to brake, there's so much weight behind it that you have to get like the top of the line quality stuff for it to do a good job. Like so, Akibono um, brake pads I have on right now, yeah, which are the original Lexus yeah. um, brake pads, and then the rotors are actually Brembo rotors. Nice. So you can never go wrong with them. Yeah, it's just still expensive, but I think that's just the way to go. It's like I think that's the best price to performance it's well that's that's the factory yeah. setup yeah. they have brembo um, rotors oh, and then they okay. have the akabono um brake pads oh okay what about trunk space it's pretty big right mm. this is a big car yeah you can fit a couple, a couple bodies, bodies. Yeah. <laughs> have you done any major repairs um well when i got the car like ninety four thousand miles i pretty much did a timing belt rotors pads 
and calipers, all for upper control arms. I've done a new steering rack. I was amazed at how easy it was to install. Yo, thank you, Toyota, for making it easy. <laughs> I looked at them like, this should look crazy, but I was like, oh no, that's pretty bad. At 200 240,000 miles, yep. like it's starting to show its age and a lot of wear, so it's like yeah. maintenance stuff like the, the bushing. I just feel like New England kind of makes that happen had, had, had an extra 100,000. What happened exactly? You said you were overheating? Oh, so pretty much I was driving and the temperature started to shot up, the shoot up, so pulled over, drove a little bit further, temperature shot up again. Looked under the hood, antifreeze everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Ended up getting it towed, getting the part to fix it that same day. And I was hoping and praying I didn't have to do another time in both. Thermostat was right up top, nice and easy to change out. Drove it to Vermont the next day. Oh, for real? Yeah, for your bachelor party. <laughs> Drove it to Vermont the next day. And that's when I realized it was good. I was like, yep, I'm oh, all set. Yeah. Thank you for making this. <laughs> You know, I know how stressed I was. I was like, not yeah. now. Like, what the hell? Still to this day, don't get me wrong. Look at the third. Like, you know, look at the the temperature of the motor. I'm just like, please don't ever go up past middle. You know. I did say a little bit about the aftermarket support. I haven't seen anything crazy for these cars. So there is a company that they do make a lot of aftermarket like suspension and mm -hmm. a few other things and like that. Um, Figs Engineering. They're also pretty expensive slow control arms the bushings the whole housings for the bushing stuff like that they're they're up there one of the few companies that actually have headers for these cars like that's the real really? thing yeah yeah i wanted something that was quality and that was gonna last and and i, I believe they say you make you do make some horsepower off of it yeah i think it's like 13 for two for the both sides yeah 1300 like a hefty price. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's but just for, for the headers, <laughs> you're the only one making it. You kind of can charge that that amount. Um, plans yeah. for the car so like, is you know, keeping, keeping up with maintenance, obviously. Keeping up with maintenance. The, the boat feels right on the ocean. It was smooth. <laughs> I just want a smooth ride. No tsunamis. Nope. Yeah. Lowering it, getting the wheels on. Hopefully, so I want to do bags, but. Other than that, this, I don't feel like I need to do too much. I mean, this is still my daily. I don't want to do too much to it. And if I yeah. got another one, then... What would you get next? Another Miata. Yes. <laughs> so that's the reason why I kind of want to get another Miata. I want yeah. another rear wheel drive car. I want something that's going to have a lot of um, support for aftermarket parts would, behind it. I would want it to do more of a track Track. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. More track, but I definitely so want to. What do you want to do about I, the motor? I want to put in a K24. Oh, okay. Do a K20 nice. swap. It's a, it's yeah. a good motor, and they're just throwing that thing into anything. Yep. Throw it into the RX8. Oh yes, yes. I've they, seen that. They've thrown it yeah. to RX7s. K swap the world. Shit. Yeah. About to K swap my cat. <laughs> <laughs> we both have cats, by the way. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thank you, Norn, for you know chilling, thank hanging you. out, talking thank cars. You. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Yes. Peace. See.